Hey everybody, Tony Krizek here, the host of Tony's Spot on Fishing. What we want to do today is something a little bit different for all of our viewers. We want to have a little conversation, an open forum if you will. Viewers can talk to us via the comment section below. We're talking muskies, the safety, and how to release them properly, and all the different things we can do to be more successful with release ratios being perfectly fine, those fish swimming off. It's musky lives matter. Now the first thing we want to talk about is the warm water temps. There's huge discussions. I, every fishing forum, musky forum, you name it, where there are talks of summertime muskies, we have all seen it. 80 degree water temperatures, don't fish them. Some guys talk about, well, can I go fish deeper water and down below it's going to be cooler water temps. And I'm catching them out of deep water. Well, here's the problem with that. The levels of oxygenation, the dispersion, it, it's not the same. Once that water temp creeps into the 80s or higher even, you have less oxygenation to the water levels. So now think about it. These are very large predator fish that are going to fight to the battle. They're going to give you a, a fight to the death almost. Think about if you're out running in super hot temperatures, you're breathing heavy. If you had less oxygen coming in, it's going to be a lot harder on your system to recover. Same with the muskies. Also, they have a buildup of lactic acid in their muscles. When that water temperature is above 80 degrees, they can't reabsorb that acid like they do in, in the cooler temps. It's formed by fighting the fish. Now, we use the heavy rods and reels, the heavy line, the leaders, all that. We have our big nets, which we're going to talk about the release stuff in a minute. But even under fighting the fish perfectly and quickly, that lactic acid still builds up and cannot be reabsorbed. Now, guys will even talk about water releases. Well, let's not even take them out of the net. You know, we unhook them there and then we'll just slide them right back in. It's still there. That's the problem. And what'll happen, these fish will swim off and, and you may think, hey, no harm, no foul. I was okay. Death usually comes within 24 hours. It's post-release death syndrome is what it's called. And it's just something that, you know, if we can avoid fishing them, accidents happen. Let's say you're, you're fishing bass, you're fishing walleyes on a lake that has muskies. Now here is the great debate. Do I fight that fish, play them out? Because if you break them off, now you got a, a, a bait stuck in deep in his mouth, maybe towards his gullet. If it's a smaller bait, bigger muskie, he might have inhaled it. So do you want to leave that in a bad position? Can you be assured that if you put a little tension to them, a little torque on them, would you straighten that hook out and be able to get them off that way quickly? Flip side, I also totally understand if you're not a musky angler and this is your first musky that was caught while targeting another species, I totally understand wanting to, to catch that fish. But if you can, try to still end that battle on those accidental catches in the warm water as quickly as possible. That's just going to help the survival rate of those fish if we can help it. Guys talk about all the time, you know, hey, I buy a fishing license, I can fish year round. That is true. And, you know, the DNR does not close the seasons down because you can't really judge if and when water temps will hit 80 or go above 80. So that is a reason there's no closed seasons and you don't get that from the Department of Natural Resources. But it is just something to, to think about and keep in your heads. Water temps get that high, it's time to chase some other fish. Come back in the fall when those fish are feeding heavy and that is when you're gonna get your true monsters. Again, any comments, please, questions, put them in the comments below. We will definitely try to get to all of them. And you know we are gonna keep this a safe and open forum. No one's gonna be attacking anyone. We just wanna have conversations to actually truly educate everyone about the safeties of not fishing in that hot water. So let's talk about the release tools. You know, water temps have come back down. Let's get guys excited, getting ready for that fall bite that's gonna be coming that late summer, early fall. Oh man, it is my favorite time of year. But let's go through, kind of review everything as far as what exactly we need to properly release these fish once the water temperatures are safe. The first thing we have is a big net and it's a true musky net. Now this is a Beckman musky net. You can run Frables, um, 
there's a couple other manufacturers out there, the quick cradles, things like that. They're specially treated bags. It won't cut into the fins as bad, so you don't have much fin damage. You're able to actually work the fish. Once we scoop that fish in the net, we're not pulling the net into the boat. We are simply leaving that fish in the water and we can work on that fish, unhooking him safely in the water. Now, how exactly are we unhooking these fish? Two most important tools. A good set of long nose pliers to keep your fingers away from the teeth. Now, what if that fish is hooked somewhat deep? Maybe he's got three sets of hooks in him and you just can't get any leverage to pop them off. These, my friends, are worth their weight in gold. The Nipex cutters. With one hand, I don't care how thick of a hook, we can cut saltwater nickel cadmium plated hooks or the biggest 6X strong musky hooks that are on the market, one-handed, no problem. And we can release that fish safely. Always have spare hooks of various sizes, regular gaps, short shanks, wide gaps, little bit of everything and all the various ots and, and have them all there at your disposal so you can swap hooks. Also, it, it happens to the best of us. I have been connected to fish, you know, reaching down in that bag, they thrash at the last second. I've had big musky hooks go through fingers one end out the other. These become very crucial when you're connected to a musky. Let me tell you, if, if it does happen and God forbid it does, you're gonna want a good set of cutters and the Nipex are the way to go. Now, let's just say that fish is down, that bait's down there a little bit deep in that fish's mouth. Here's one other tool that doesn't get talked about too much anymore, the good old mouth spreaders. Now, I can tell you what, I've been fishing muskies religiously now since 1996, 95. I think I've had to use my mouth spreaders twice. That's how often I've had a muskie actually take it deep down its throat. Usually it's a smaller bucktail, like a Frenchie model bucktail. But when that happens, these mouth spreaders will safely keep that muskie's mouth open or even bigger pike too. And you can get in there, grab your bait, unhook them, and release that fish again safely. Now, once we have the hooks out, the bait's free of the net, we're gonna pull them out of that net. As soon as that fish comes out of the net, when we pull them up, we wanna go right to a horizontal hold. If we hung that fish vertical, it puts so much stress and pressure on his spine, and it will start popping those joints down the spinal column. Always support their bellies. Horizontal holds are the best. That will save those fish, again, from post-release death syndrome. Now, for measuring those fish, there's a few options. Uh, a tape measure, of course, is very good. Uh, the musky bump boards that are out now, very nice. You can lay the fish flat, they're safe. Uh, also, if you wanna to choose to measure in the water, the floating rulers that are out now are another great option. Have your boat partner ready, you know, to take a picture right away. As soon as you get the length, quick picture, we put the fish right back down in the water, hold on to that fish until he's revived, swims out of your hands, tail kicks, and he's gone. So just these little things, can help preserve musky fisheries for future generations. And there's more interest in muskies these days, which is fantastic. And the reason for that is the more people are out fishing these fish, the more all the different de statewide Department of Natural Resources are gonna put money into those programs. If there's not the demand, you're not gonna get the support. So the more we can educate, protect these fish, grow the interest in the sport, the more muskies that are gonna be there for all of us. I don't know about you, but I love catching muskies. It is my favorite thing in the world to do. So again, ladies and gentlemen, questions, comments, please, in the comments below, we will get to all of them. Nice open discussion. No one's gonna get hot-headed here. We just wanna help educate on what has become a very hot and almost volatile uh, topic uh, across the fishing community. So we hope that we're able to shed some light Again, send us your questions. We'll be more than happy to answer them. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tony Krizak, and we will see you again on Tony's Spot on Fishing. <laughs>